Well, let's uh, bring in three members of Parliament now to talk about what is happening uh, across the land in this country. Yasser Nakvi is the Liberal MP for Ottawa Centre, where the protest is located, including Parliament Hill, of course. He's also the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Emergency Preparedness. Melissa Lansman is an Ontario Conservative MP and her party's transport critic. And Taylor Backrack is a British Columbia New Democrat MP and his party's transport critic. Good to see you all. Thanks for being here. Uh, Mr. Nakvi, let me start with you. Uh, you and your government condemn these protests. You uh, have described the protesters as lawbreakers, but they're still there. What Canadians see is protesters running the streets and government so far unable or unwilling to stop that. Why is that? Well, um, Peter, I represent the riding of Ottawa Centre where Parliament Hill is located. My community has been under siege now for uh, for almost uh, two two weeks. Uh, my uh, constituents, people who live in the downtown core, are, have been harassed. They've been intimidated. They've been yelled at. Uh, the businesses have been have been shuttered essentially uh, because they cannot uh, operate. Uh, we need to make sure that this. Uh, 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 protest, uh, this occupation comes to end now because it's impacting people and their lives. Uh, right, but we let me just jump in. But, you've been, but you and others have been saying this for two weeks now, and it's still there. And some people watching, they're going, look, somebody do something. Yeah, and it's a law enforcement issue. We need to make sure that, that uh, uh, all law enforcement agencies led by Ottawa police uh, put an end uh, to this protest. We've been working very closely with Ottawa Police Services, making sure that they have all the resources they need uh, by way of RCMP. I know uh, the provincial government uh, has been given, the, uh, has provided them OPP officers and there are other police services from the province there as well. We need to ensure that the law is enforced and this occupation okay. of downtown Ottawa puts, comes to an end. All right. But after, after a couple of weeks, uh, Ottawa police uh, told the protesters today, Melissa Lansman, that uh, they risk being charged if they're blocking streets. That's two weeks into the protest. Your, your party has been largely supportive of the protesters in Ottawa. Uh, do you support these protests and the effect they're having, not just the ones here, but the ones across the country? Uh, I think the ones across the country speak to the frustration that Canadians are seeing. And we've seen them in all capitals and we've seen them at all legislatures uh, and we see them continuously um, uh, popping up. Now, where I think that that right to protest stops is, is when you've got a blockade and you've got a blockade on critical infrastructure. It is our party uh, that brought forward uh, uh, um, an attempt to try to add um, the blocking of a critical infrastructure with harsher sentences in a bill that we discussed in this parliament and we were laughed off by uh, by the liberal government. So, look, I think this is uh, entirely because of a lack of leadership and it didn't have to get to this. And there is one thing that the prime minister can do to take the temperature down and it's to stop alienating uh, Canadians and stop dividing Canadians and it's to bring forward a plan to end the restrictions and end the mandates. All right, I, I want to get to that as our uh, discussion continues here, but let me bring in uh, Taylor Backrack. Uh, Mr. Backrack, what's missing from the government's response? Well, the, the buck stops with the Prime Minister and, and there needs to be a plan. At this point, we have all of these different jurisdictions all pointing fingers at each other and we have the downtown of a capital city of a, of a G7 country and we, and we don't have control over it. So that is a, is a huge problem. Now, you know, to Melissa's point, uh, one of the things that we've seen is we've seen members of her party out there in the streets taking selfies with the people who are blockading the downtown and kind of egging them on. And I appreciate that she's called for the blockaders to, to go home, but that's not a consistent message that we're hearing. Now, this is having a profound effect on the people of Ottawa. And, I, you know, peaceful protest uh, aimed at government policy is one thing, but the people who are being hurt here are downtown businesses, people who are trying to go to work, people who are trying to live their lives. And, and it's time uh, that this was brought to an end. And ultimately, there needs to be a plan. And, and I believe that the responsibility falls uh, at the feet of the prime right. minister. Let, For a week, we didn't even hear from the guy. OK, let's pivot the conversation to, to that then. Uh, Mr. Nackvi, let me turn to you here. Uh, the protests are unfolding in this context of more and more provinces backing off their pandemic restrictions. So the conversation in the land now is very much alive over lifting restrictions. So. What additional pressure does that put on your government in dealing with these protesters and their demands to end vaccine mandates and other restrictions and to present Canadians with a roadmap for living with COVID-19? Well, Peter, from the very beginning, uh, 
our government has been focused on dealing with this global pandemic by relying on science, by ensuring that we're taking the best advice from public health experts as to how we're going to put an end to this global pandemic right here in Canada. Science needs to drive policy here, not politics like the, the, the Conservative Party has been doing with this particular uh, issue. And, and science has, has told us again and again that vaccination is our strongest tool available for us to put an end to this uh, pandemic and will continue uh, to ensure that Canadians uh, uh, get vaccinated, get their uh, triple shots, so that we can move through this pandemic and start rebuilding our lives. Right, okay. Uh, Melissa Lanceman, the, the Prime Minister has become the key target of protesters, but uh, look, Conservative premiers, and that's most of the premiers in the country, they've also introduced vaccine mandates and vaccine passports. Many are now lifting them, let's say that. Ontario says it has no plans to lift the mask mandate or vaccine passports for now, but how is this ideological when, when leaders across all parties have imposed restrictions? Well, this isn't ideological, and I think the Liberals have, uh, have have frankly stopped looking at science, and they're engaging in political science. We have premiers across the country dropping restrictions. We have chief the chief medical health officer of uh, of Canada who have given the Liberals the green light to stop these mandates and stop these restrictions. We have members of their own caucus, Peter, now calling uh, the prime minister minister, a divisive leader trying to pit Canadians against each other because of these mandates. The, all, the, all the government has to do right now is to present a plan to get us out of this pandemic and to get us to start living with COVID. It's not going anywhere. We are the highest vaccinated popular, one of the highest in the world at 90% of Canadians vaccinated. So I think I have a lot of questions just like Canadians do. What's the threshold? Is it 92? Is it 94.7? The Prime Minister hasn't answered that question. In fact, he's answered no questions on this. All right, Mr. Backrack, the, the NDP Premier of your province in British Columbia is proceeding uh, more cautiously on lifting restrictions, leaving, he says, entirely to the medical experts to decide on the timing. Uh, are you concerned some provinces are, are lifting restrictions uh, too quickly? And uh, tie that into your, uh, some of your concerns about a federal roadmap to sort of tie it all together uh, to no, you know, give Canadians a sense of what they should expect. Uh, thanks, Peter. To the credit of Premier Horgan and, and uh, the British Columbia government, our province has had some of the best outcomes throughout this pandemic, uh, both healthcare wise, health outcome wise and economically. So I think it is a, a really prudent approach that they've taken listening to the public health advice and, and moving very cautiously. And they've been able to keep the province more open than many other provinces. Um, we shouldn't be making major public health decisions based on the number of people who park their cars in the middle of the road. We need to uh, absolutely follow the science. But where I agree with Melissa is that there needs to be a plan. And that's what we've been calling for. That's what Jagmeet called for in the House the other day. Uh, we need the Prime Minister to step forward and, and lead the way and show Canadians in a very transparent way, here's how we're going to work together across jurisdictions to get out of this crisis. Mr. Times Nackfie of uncertainty like this are, are so critical for leadership, and we're just not seeing it. Mr. Nackfie, we have a second Liberal MP from Quebec now. Eve Robillard has backed Joelle Lightbound. Uh, another Quebec MP accusing the Prime Minister of marginalizing opponents of, uh, of, to his pandemic response for political reasons, uh, dividing and stigmatizing is, are the words he used. Uh, do you acknowledge the divisions over this and what responsibility do you think the Prime Minister bears? No, the Prime Minister has been steadfast in his response uh, as the leader uh, of, of, uh, of our country in fighting this pandemic from day one. He has relied on good science relied on public health experts uh, to uh, do everything possible to protect Canadians, to have their back. Again, this is not the moment that we should start engaging in politics and start making political decisions. But, but you, have a, you have a colleague, you have a colleague who said that moment was right after the election, during the election, right after that you were engaging in the politics. Well, you know, we were very clear during the, during the campaign that, that vaccination and vaccine mandates are important and necessary to put an end to this pandemic. And Canadians elected us. Can, in fact, Canadians elected, uh, 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 voted for more parties who supported vaccines and vac uh, vaccine mandates than any other political party. And so we need to make sure that we get this job done. We need to ensure that we are listening uh, to medical uh, experts 
and not play politics okay. with this issue as let, the conservatives me, are doing just because they have a leadership race okay. going on. Let, this, they're using okay. this as a distraction. A distraction All right, let, me, uh, let, me, let, me, let me follow up on that with, with Melissa Lantzman. Uh, Ms. Lantzman, look at Canada's record of dealing with the pandemic. Yes, with tougher restrictions than many other countries, but uh, one of the lowest death rates in the developed world, one of the highest vaccination rates in the world. Are those two things connected? And do they tell us that the rules in Canada have mostly worked? We know that the, the, the virus has evolved and we know that the science has changed. And the only thing that hasn't changed is the government's talking points. They are still using the same talking points as they were using a year ago, relying on the same metrics, even though we have more tools. So what we are asking for is a plan to CNN. That's a plan for business owners to have their businesses opened and not shuttered. That's a plan to for families to mend their differences on these divisive mandates. The prime minister himself says the people People that don't agree with him on these issues are un-Canadian. And we're calling for an end to that because Canadians have had enough. And you can see it in every downtown centre uh, and in every uh, uh, in every legislature around right. the country. Mr. Backrack, a fi Peter, final word Peter, you... if I may, if I may just very quickly, you, Melissa may be engaging... Real, real quick. Me? Yeah, Melissa may be engaging in ta talking points. We are focused on creating sound public policy. Okay, Mr. good public health. Mr. Advice. Backrack, let me give the final word to you here. Uh, is is there is, should there be a discussion around the pivot point? Yes, uh, deferring to science, uh, but it's been a long time that Canadians have been living under the restrictions. Does does uh, what role do political leaders play in this? In sort of you know reading. Uh, reading the room, uh, the, the writ large, uh, the room is Canada, and how much people are prepared to tolerate. Sure, the, the most important commodity right now is trust, and you get trust from transparency and from stepping forward and showing leadership during times of uncertainty. We need to see that transparent plan. I think there, there's broad agreement around that. We need to follow the science. We know that vaccines work, and at the same time, we need to focus on our healthcare system and plugging some of the holes that have, have become evident over the course of the past two years. We need a plan okay. for investment, for hospital beds, so that we don't find ourselves in this critical situation again. And, and frankly, every day that goes by without that plan is one more day that we're going to be in this very tough situation. All right. I want to thank you all for your time tonight. Uh, uh, covered lots and lots more to cover as uh, this conversation with Canadians continues. But uh, thank you all for your time tonight. Good to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks, Peter.